beautiful souls. Welcome to Soulful Sessions with Rory, the podcast where we dive deep into the matters of the heart, mind, and spirit. And I'm your host, Rory, and I'm thrilled to embark on this soulful journey with each and every one of you. Soulful Sessions is your safe space for introspection, inspiration, and maybe even a little revelation. Whether you're sipping your morning coffee, winding down after a long day, or just seeking a moment of connection, you're in the right place. Before we dive into today's Soulful Exploration, I want to remind you that Soulful Sessions with Rory is designed for entertainment purposes only. While we may touch on profound, profound topics and meaningful discussions, it's important to approach our conversations with an open heart and a sense of curiosity. Life is a journey and so is this podcast. We'll navigate the realms of self-discovery, spirituality, and personal growth. But remember, the insights we share here are not a substitute for professional advice or guidance. Always consult with the appropriate professionals regarding your unique circumstances. So whether you're a seasoned seeker or just dipping your toes into the waters of self-exploration, get ready for a blend of wisdom, laughter, and a touch of magic in each episode of Soulful Sessions with Rory. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you never miss a soulful moment. Follow me on social media, IG at Soulful Explore, Facebook, Listening Veteran Life Coach, and Snapchat, Rory Soulful Explore. To stay connected, share your thoughts, and be a part of this incredible community. Now let the journey begin, sit back, relax, and let's fill our souls together. Today's soulful episode is, what role does sex and intimacy play in any relationship? Now when I say any relationship, let's be clear, we're talking romantic relationships. You know, I don't, I don't know weird stuff going on here, but I just want to say, um, what role does sex play sex and intimacy play in any relationship. Now, first, this became a topic for me because whether I'm talking to a client or a friend or anybody else, you know, you hear kind of the same things over and over again. Uh, one of those things being that, you know, all this person wanted from me was sex or it's I'm saving myself for marriage or it's I've given up sex because it tends to ruin relationships. So I felt that this this was a, a a vacuum space that a lot of people don't want to talk about because there's the difference between men and women speaking on it. And then there's just, you know, it's taboo. You know, talking about sex has always been taboo as well as intimacy. First, I want to talk about what my belief system is as far as what's the difference between sex and intimacy. So first of all, sex to me is a form of intimacy. But there's several types of sex and there's several types of intimacy. So I like to say physical, mental and spiritual. And I had somebody question, well, what do you mean spiritual, spiritual sex? So when you're having sex with someone, you're sharing energy, you're sharing space, time. So to me, it's deeper than, you know, just a physical thing. It's it's spiritual in some cases. Now, do you have to have a connection with that person for it to be spiritual? I, I don't know. I think that that's that's subjective, but. I would like to believe that there is a spiritual connection. Then there's the physical. Of course, the physical is the, the way your body's touched, the sweat, everything else. Um, and we're talking about sex. We're going to get to um, non-sexual intimacy in a second. And then there's the mental, you know, because some people have sex way before they've actually physically touched each other. And so if you understand this, you know that, OK, here are the different types of sex that you can have. We're not talking about the types, you know, where it's like positions and, you know, whether or not you have a threesome, foursomes, twosomes, onesomes, halfsomes. Yes, there are halfsomes. I know you didn't know, but it's OK. I'm teaching you. So those are the things. Uh, but but then when you want to talk about intimacy, non-sexual intimacy, there's still physical, mental and spiritual. So let me explain what I mean. So physical intimacy that's non-sexual is something as simple as you sitting on the couch with your partner and you all are just holding each other or or her leg is touching your leg or his arm is touching your arm. Whereas it's physical touch, but it's not sexual and it's just a comfort of knowing they're there. Um, and then there's the mental. The mental intimacy is where, you know, this person really is concerned and cares about your well-being, your safety and things of that nature. So the int intimacy comes when that person is checking on you, you know, just saying, hey, how was your day? You know, are you OK? And just know that I care about 
what's going on in your life. They're the person that's listening to you when you get off work, making sure that you're good. So that's where the, the physical intimacy comes. I mean, excuse me, the mental intimacy and the spiritual intimacy is pretty much the same thing where there's a deeper connection from that person where they are they're they're in tune with you. You know, it's almost like they come home and, and, and they already brought you some food, but you never told them you were hungry because spiritually you are connected. You know, you see life on the same plane and it's non-sexual. So those those pretty much kind of sum up the the forms of sex and the forms of intimacy that I want to talk about today. You know, uh, now when you talk about sex and you talk about intimacy, you know, one of the things like exploring your own fantasies uh, through both of those ways is, is very possible. So, you know, that could that could have something to do with what it means to you in the interim, what it means in that relationship. So you have to decide what role does it play with you as an individual when you're not sharing your body with anyone, but also what role does it play with you and your partner when you do have a partner? And so how do you know, first of all, when it's not good for you? Mm. That one is tricky. And I say it's tricky because we're not just talking about physical. Excuse me. We're not just talking about sexual intimacy. We're talking sexual and non-sexual. Rory, you mean non-sexual intimacy can be bad for me? Absolutely. Now, remember, this is my opinion. So let me give you some examples of where I believe it would be bad for you. Let's say you had someone you used to be physically intimate with. And you've decided that, you know what, we're just friends. We're not this. We're not that. But this same person is still buying you lunch, making sure you're good. This same person is still making sure your car is good. This same person is still there for you. They're, they're non-sexually intimate with you, but they're there for you. If you need a hug, they'll come give you a hug. But you all aren't romantic partners anymore. You're not having sex. This is how it could be bad. So when you do that, sometimes you leave the door open. Now, that doesn't mean you all are going to get back together. It doesn't mean you all are going to be sexually intimate. No, but that door is open. So if that door is open and you're expecting someone else to enter into your life, you can't because your door is open. You're still looking for that person to fill a void. No, that void isn't sexual anymore. But this, the sad part about this one is that sometimes this happens while you're still in the relationship. You just won't let it go. But you you want to fill that void that, that's created, you know, from everything else. This guy or this woman was a good person, but they weren't good for you. And it's safe. So you keep them around. You keep them doing the things that you're doing so that you can feel safe. I know. I know. I know. You're probably looking at yourself right now saying, yes, that I'm guilty. You know, that guy that you want to just go lay up in the bed with. You all aren't going to have sex, but you know he's not good for you. But you still want to go lay up with him. That woman, you know, makes you feel comfortable. She cooks for you. You know, sometimes she'll come clean your house or do things. And you know that she's not good for you. But you still let her do it. And then we're going to talk about how do you know it's not good for you? It's not good for you because of how you feel. You still feel empty. You still feel hollow. You still feel like that there's no fulfillment. Keyword fulfillment. And guess what? It's the exact same when it is sexual intimacy. You still feel empty. You feel used even. And the funny thing is, is when you feel used, it's not necessarily because that person is using you. It could also be because you're using that person. You keep them around because you're scared. You keep them around because they're safe. You know they're crazy. You know what they do. So if you open up the door to someone else, how do you know they're not going to treat you the same way? Faith. But we'll get into that. We'll definitely get into that. But we talked about how you know when it's not good for you. So if that's the case, then what are the benefits of sex and intimacy? In a good relationship or a good situation. Well, so the benefits are, number one, 
with your partner it can help you increase your connection you know and i and i mean don't get me wrong sex does not mend the bridge together sex is not the foundation intimacy is not the foundation but what i'm saying to you is that you are intimate with your partner whether it be sexual or non-sexual it can help in some cases increase the connection that you already have for that person it can help to increase the bond excuse me so it also can provide a physical sense of release now this one is even if you're not in a relationship now people say well rory non-sexual release yes non-sexual release is just when you are letting go of things you are loving on yourself so much you know from a spiritual mental perspective not physical and you're just letting yourself know that you're a good person you are right you're worthy and that can release so much stress so much anxiety so and then when you're with your partner it's the same thing letting them know that everything's going to be okay and even the physical aspects of it help to relieve stress you know, you know about those endorphins, you know, you need those. So there are benefits to physical and non physical excuse me, to sexual and non-sexual intimacy. You know, uh, the disadvantages of sexual and non-sexual intimacy is, number one, it can also create a false sense of love. You know, you've ever been with somebody and immediately afterwards, you just felt different. You felt like, oh, my God, this was amazing. The sex was great. The conversation was great. I love her. She loves me. I love him. He loves me. And you're just thinking everything is wonderful. And the very next day, the person doesn't call you. You know, the very next day you call the person and they're like, hey, I'm busy. Let me hit you back. You know, but yet you're thinking, but we had a connection, you know, and, and there was none. You know, so it can give you a false sense of hope that this person is the one um which also kind of falls into a false sense of love false sense of connection um it can put you in a position to where you can be abused mentally physically spiritually you know if you're not paying attention and that connection that you create in your mind with that person whether it be sexual or non-sexual intimacy it can be dangerous. Now, I'm not trying to use this as a, a warning. No, not at all. What I'm explaining to you is that there are, are possibilities. I personally choose to focus on the positive. So I believe that if I am intimate with someone, whether it be non-sexual or sexual, that it's going to give me the building blocks that I need to have a healthy, successful relationship. That is my 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 desire. That is my drive. And, and that is my purpose. Now, the role that intimacy plays in your life at the end of the day is up to you. What does it mean to be sexually intimate with someone? What does it mean to be sexual, to be uh, non-sexually intimate with someone for you? See, I can sit here and tell you all day what it means to me. But what matters is what it means to you. And then the other part of that is what kind of conversation are you going to have with your partner? Now, if you're not in a relationship, yes, you need to look at your rose and have a conversation. Look, I can't see you all the time, Rose. You know what I'm talking about. You know, you know. But no, seriously, you do need to have that conversation. And it's OK that early in a relationship, you explain to your partner what intimacy means to you. You know, I think that sometimes we get so caught up in the initial feelings that it just feels good. But then all of a sudden, and I hear this a lot from couples. At some point, I felt like all this person wanted from me was sex. And I didn't desire this person because, you know, all they did was nag me or, or aggravate me. So intimacy was out of the picture. And when you say intimacy, they're not just talking sexual. They're talking non-sexual intimacy either. I've seen couples that just don't want to touch each other. I've seen couples that just don't want to say hello. They don't want to do anything because they're angry. They're bitter. But I do want to point out that in this situation, the number one problem that I see is love for self. So in all of this intimacy that we're talking about, 
the number one thing is to create intimacy towards yourself, sexual and non-sexual. Just depends on how you're feeling that day. I'm talking more so about non-sexual. No, I'm not saying it's, it's wrong to, to pleasure yourself. No, I'm just saying that at the end of all of this, I really want you to learn to love yourself unconditionally. Sometimes, you know, just take your arms and give yourself a hug. Sometimes look in the mirror and say, you're OK. You're beautiful. You're handsome. You are right with me. Sometimes you got to say you make me feel safe. See, because growing up, not all of us had a protector or a provider. Some of us didn't have that. So you are now your own protector and provider. You are providing the non-sexual intimacy for yourself. So you have to remind yourself of this. See, because when you start loving on you, when you start protecting you, then you can turn around and give that energy to your spouse, to your mate, to your partner. If you're single, then you're preparing yourself for that intimate relationship. And sex no longer becomes taboo. Non-sexual intimacy no longer becomes taboo. You begin to have conversations and dialogue with your partner to have a better understanding of what each person needs. Have a better understanding of what you need. See, because regardless of what you feel about it with that person, you still have to focus on what is it that you need. See, because it's very true that you could be saying this about one person you know, I don't want to touch her because, you know, it seems like all she wants from me is this. And then the, the person that you get with next literally wants the same thing and is very obvious, but they just add a little bit more. So you feel OK with it. So you got to have an understanding of exactly what it is you want from that person. It's not from people. Because every relationship that you have is going to be different. You're going to desire different things from different people. You know, you may be with one person and say, I love to travel and go on vacations with this person. But you were with another person and you ain't even want to leave the house because you ain't want them in public. We ain't going to talk about that. So you have to make up your mind in regards to the person you're currently with. What exactly do you desire from them? And then you have to be mature enough to have the conversation. Well, you know, baby, uh, my form of non-sexual intimacy is when we're sitting on the couch and you just touch me. I love that. You know, my form is when I walk through the door from work, you just give me a hug and a kiss. I love that. My form is when you pay the bills. I love that. My form of non-sexual intimacy is when you buy me lunch and I'm at work and you're thinking about me. You pick up the phone and you call me. You let me know that you care. That's intimate to me. You know, and then you talk about the sexual intimacy. What do you desire? You know, I like when you pull my hair. I like when you smack my ass. I like when you do this. Yes, I'm talking about women, but it could be men too. Just saying, don't touch my booty hole. You know how that go. So. At the end of the day, you got to decide what kind of conversation are you going to have with your partner? And when you have this conversation, are you going to be honest, emotionally transparent? Don't worry about what they think. Don't worry about what they say, because the first person you learn to be intimate with should be you. And then once you learn what you desire, what you deserve, you share it with your partner so they can make an honest assessment and say, you know what? I can do this or I can't do that. But you got to be open to the conversation. You got to be open to intimacy. Sex isn't all bad. Non-sexual intimacy isn't all bad. We get so caught up in what we desire that we stop looking at our partners and seeing what they desire. If you just wake up every morning and you say to yourself, I'm going to give this person something to add a smile to their face. I'm going to give this something person to look this person something to look forward to. Sexual or non-sexual. Stop making it about you. Make it about them. And in turn, if they make it about you, guess what? It's two people trying to make it about the other person. Everybody should be happy. Yes, yes, yes. I know in a perfect world. But that's where the communication comes in. That's where the patience comes in. 
and it's okay to hit the reset button on your relationship. Stop thinking that you're supposed to live and thrive in those past moments. No, hit that reset button. That reset button, not to get a new person. Let me say that. I'm saying the reset button to let go of the past. Let go of the past behavior. Stop telling yourself, well, I just told him I wanted to cuddle and how it's important to me. I know he's just going to sit there and play video game. Or I know he's going to go hang out with his boy. So I'm not going to even bring it up. I'm just going to be bitter and angry and look at him in the same light. Oh, I know that, you know, I want to have sex with her and, and she's not going to want to because she just da 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 da. Let go of the past. Live in the present and look forward to the future. Someone has to stop so that you all can begin. So start over, hit that reset button. Man, it's, it's a beautiful thing if you allow it to be. The overall message to this is that if you be true to yourself and be true to your partner about your sexual intimacy desires, about your non-sexual intimate desires, you can't go wrong. It's no shame in doing your thing, regardless of what that thing is. Share your story with your spouse. Share your story with yourself. Ask yourself, why am I not wanting to be intimate with my partner, sexual or non-sexual? Do they make me feel safe? If they don't make you feel safe, then you need to figure out what it is you need from them so you feel safe. Have they provided the security? Has this person made me desire them? Not just sexually, but in any fashion. And if they haven't, then what it, what will it take for them to do to get you there? At the end of the day, it's up to you. So be true to yourself and be true to your partner. Be true to your relationship and don't be afraid to say what you need so that you can practice intimacy in whatever form you may try it. So thank you, beautiful souls, for joining me today on another enlightening episode of Soulful Sessions with Rory. If this episode resonated with you, share it with someone who might benefit as we navigate the depths of introspection and explore the boundless possibilities of the human spirit. Remember that your journey is uniquely yours. And every twist and turn is a sacred part of your story. Embrace the whispers of your soul and may the echoes of our conversations linger in your heart, sparking a flame of self-discovery until we meet again in the realm of shared wisdom. Stay true to your essence. Stay connected to the rhythm of your soul. And always remember that you are a masterpiece in the making, wishing you love, light and infinite possibilities on your soulful journey. Until next time, this is Rory signing off with gratitude and reverence for the magic that resides in each and every one of you.